Was it really all in vain? No. Despite some errors, the new Chandrayaan-3 results show that something unusual is happening on the moon. With the groundbreaking results of this daring mission, India has finally catapulted itself into the top league of spacefaring nations, and one thing is certain, India will not give up. After the end of Chandrayaan-3, the Indian space chief announced exciting news. Chandrayaan-4 will deliver a new sensation in just a few years. With a sophisticated lander and rover equipped with state-of-the-art technology, Chandrayaan-3 was more than just a successful lunar mission. It was a milestone in lunar exploration, the risks of which were enormous from the very beginning. Nevertheless, the Indian Space Agency, ISRO, spared no expense in launching this mission of the century. For Chandrayaan-3, India invested around 31 million euros for the construction of the probes and the propulsion module alone. ISRO had to spend another 46 million euros on the launch vehicle alone. And all this to possibly go bankrupt? Yes, but the Indians knew what they were doing. Even after the Chandrayaan-2 failure, in which all the probes except the orbiter were lost, India did not shy away from another attempt and the expenditure of millions. Chandrayaan-3 was launched on July 14, 2023, from the Satish Dhawan Space Center with the ambitious goal of performing a soft landing on the south pole of the moon for the first time, something no other nation had dared to do before India. Not even NASA has visited the south pole, even though we urgently need to know more about this important region. At the poles, researchers suspect the largest water deposits on the Earth's satellite, and if we want to settle on the moon, we need to know where there is water. The Chandrayaan-2 leftover orbiter coordinated the gentle landing of the stationary research probe Vikram and the rover Pragyan from lunar orbit. In August, not only millions of Indians held their breath, but space enthusiasts all over the world eagerly awaited the historic landing. Vikram and Pragyan, a celebration of technology. It sounds almost too crazy to be true, but although India is still relatively new to space exploration, the technical sophistication of Chandrayaan-3's two probes is mind-blowing. Chandrayaan-3 should explore secrets of the moon that would benefit the entire international community. More knowledge about the South Pole of the moon would not only bring national laurels to ISRO, but also bring closer cooperation with scientists in the rest of the world. At the same time as India, Russia was planning a very similar project. Luna 25 was also supposed to perform a soft landing at the South Pole, but the mission failed miserably. The Russian probes crashed a few days before Chandrayaan-3 landed on the moon. The main probe initially consisted of three main components, the propulsion module, the lander, and the rover. The module was to bring the lander from Earth orbit into lunar orbit and was the largest part of the mission. A GSLV MK3 rocket was required to launch more than two tons into space. The launch went perfectly, and the mission was launched safely from an orbit around 150 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Equipped with a main engine and a retractable solar cell wing, the trio set off on their journey to the moon. The lander and the rover were roughly identical to the probes of the predecessor mission, Chandrayaan-2. Vikram, the stationary measuring station, received minor improvements in the form of even better landing legs and was of course equipped with only the latest instruments. After decoupling from the propulsion module, Vikram had to land on the moon independently, with Pragyan stowed in the cargo hold. Control from Earth was out of the question. Radio delays of just a few seconds could lead to fatal errors during the landing approach. Instead, acceleration sensors, an altimeter, cameras to identify the position, a laser Doppler velocimeter, and ground contact sensors ensured fully automatic control. Vikram's computers calculated the altitude, the best position, and the landing site in real time on site, and with the help of the data provided by the cameras and sensors. The probes, weighing more than one ton, navigated safely from lunar orbit to the surface on their own. The high-tech instruments recorded every change in the environment during the approach, and the surface was scanned immediately on arrival. The South Pole is considered extremely difficult for landing probes. Pointed rocks, rugged valleys, and depressions with sharp-edged stones lurk everywhere. Although ISRO had an approximate position, Vikram did the rest of the navigation on site. Four fully automatic reaction wheels and four controllable main thrusters ensured a soft landing, 
which slowed down in good time using perfectly calculated counter-thrust forces. For India, the entire descent of the two was a nail-biter, with images of the Lunar 25 crash in their minds. But then came the unbridled joy, television broadcast live across the country, and millions of Indians cheered as Vikram and Pragyan landed safely on the lunar surface. Can you imagine the excitement of watching the two take their first steps on the moon? For India, it must have been a bit like when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin first set foot on the moon. Shortly after landing, Vikram opened his loading hatch and the little Pragyan rolled down a ramp. The small vehicle once again demonstrates ISRO's amazingly advanced technological capabilities. Equipped with a solar panel and a particularly flexible multi-wheel drive, this mini measuring station was to go on its own exploration tours on the moon. With an alpha particle X-ray spectrometer attached to a fully mechanical arm, Pragyan can examine the regolith rock as it travels. A special device uses lasers to heat the rock to reveal more details about its chemical composition. Thanks to laser plasma spectroscopy, Pragyan promptly found previously undiscovered sulfur deposits on the moon, and further investigations showed that the regolith at the South Pole is rich in magnesium, aluminum, silicon, potassium, calcium, titanium, and iron. Naturally, Vikram also launched its mission immediately. The stationary lander was specially designed to take temperature measurements and record moonquakes. The second exciting mission was to take temperature measurements directly in the lunar soil. These values are of great importance if we want to know where there might be ice deposits in the lunar soil. The Chandra's surface thermophysical experiment can drill into the lunar soil and directly determine the thermal conductivity and temperature of the regolith. And Vikram made a discovery. The soil at the South Pole is far too warm for there to be any major ice deposits. The scientists were baffled and now have to look for new explanations. Shortly after landing, the lander's one-meter-long boom also scanned the density of the plasma near the moon's surface and found that the plasma density there is surprisingly high. The result is also being celebrated as a small revolution in specialist circles. Last but not least, Vikram's seismometer registered a small moonquake lasting three seconds on August 26, 2023. The pair's mission was therefore a complete success, but the south pole of the moon has a few more pitfalls. Not only sharp rocks and impassable craters lurk here, but also an icy cold. There are 14 days of light on the moon, and then the 14-day lunar night falls. During the dark period, it becomes too cold at the south pole of the moon for Vikram and Pragyan to continue operating, and so the two had to be put into a dormant state. Pragyan was the first to be decommissioned on September 2, 2023. By then, the little rover had already traveled an incredible 101.4 meters and provided a lot of insightful data. Vikram performed another small feat before its rest period. From Earth, the ISRO scientists tested whether the landing system was also suitable for moving the lander on site, and this test was also a complete success. Vikram lifted itself 40 centimeters off the ground, floated through the air, and landed safely on the ground again a little further away. On September 5, 2023, Vikram also went into rest. After the lunar night, both probes were of course supposed to resume their work, but this is where the Indian space traveler's bad luck began again. Neither Pragyan nor Vikram responded to the signals from Earth, and even the built-in automatic wake-up function of the two did not bring them back. Vikram and Pragyan were most probably victims of the extreme cold. Why the ISRO decided not to install radionuclide heating elements in the two probes, which cost millions of euros, is a mystery. For weeks, the Indians tried to re-establish contact, and then it was certain. Chandrayaan-3 had definitely come to an end with the lunar night. However, as the mission objectives were basically fulfilled, India celebrated the success anyway and received much applause from all over the world. Last greeting from Chandrayaan-3. Despite the successes, India was of course saddened by the loss of the two rovers. It would have been just too good if Pragyan and Vikram had continued their mission, but all was not lost. One thing had survived the disaster, the propulsion module. This Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft had the task of transporting the lander and the rover from Earth orbit to lunar orbit, and it was not lost after the end of its mission. 
there was enough fuel to bring the module back. The module navigated independently with its thrusters through the universe to Earth orbit. After several orbital maneuvers and another month of flight time, the propulsion module reached home, and India used this opportunity to carry out some important tests with the module. Tests should show how much load a propulsion module can carry from Earth to the Moon and possibly back again. Once we have settlements on the Moon, there will be modules like this that will practically fly from Earth to the Moon on a scheduled service. The return of the module was seen in India with one laughing and one crying eye. It was good that something of Chandrayaan-3 had survived. Chandrayaan-4 is coming. Who would have thought it? Shortly after the successful return of the propulsion module was officially announced by India, the director of the Space Applications Center, Nilesh M. Desai, announced India's detailed plans for Chandrayaan-4 on November 17, 2023. The aim is clearly to return extensive lunar samples to Earth. The launch is scheduled for 2027, and this time India will send several modules to the Moon in another spectacular mission. The lunar lander will take the soil sample and will presumably be a measuring station similar to Vikram. Afterwards, the planned lunar lander is to be launched towards lunar orbit. The launch pad for this feat will be integrated directly into the lander, and in space, the transfer module will take the samples from the lunar module and fly them back to Earth. The entire transportation series could be designed as a sustainable project and bring many more soil samples from the Moon to Earth after a successful mission. Subscribe to the channel now. There are many more great videos to come.